The real estate market in Australia had boomed higher than most countries around the world. They have become completely unaffordable in major cities like Sydney. Today, we are on the edge of the cliff, just waiting for a gust of wind. And that gust of wind is coming this year. But what is it? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today, we are going to look at what's happening in Australia, focusing specifically on the real estate market. This video is for all my friends in Australia, but no matter where you are in the world, this information is important, so stay tuned, pay attention. I'm going to bring this info to you, jam-packed episode. Let's get into it right away. Hundreds of thousands of Aussie households face a $7,000 hike in home loan repayments as new rules bite hard and it could cause trouble across the whole economy. What am I talking about here? Well, it's something that we had seen in the housing crisis of the U.S. a decade ago. Check this out. Every year, for the next three years, up to an estimated 200,000 home loans will be moved from low repayments to higher repayments as their interest-only loans expire. Ouch. The median increase in payments is around $7,000 a year. $7,000 is a lot of money to somebody who's paying on an interest-only loan. These are generally people who are unable to afford paying more money. And all of a sudden, they're going to be um, you know, having that $7,000 tacked on. Interest-only are known as riskier loans, but they became a big deal in Australia quite recently. Check this out. In 2015, it reached the point where nearly 40% of new home loans were interest only. Borrowers weren't paying back the money that they borrowed, the principal, just the interest. Nearly 40% of the people getting loans were doing it with interest only. What does that tell you? Number one, about the affordability, the housing prices and how much money people have. This is a big mistake, Australia. Doing interest only is inevitable failure. And I can't believe they let it grow this big. I didn't realize it was 40%. That's insane. Then in 2017, the government cracked down hard on interest-only loans. Those loans generally have an interest-only period lasting five years. When it expires, some borrowers would simply roll it over for another five years. Now, many will not be able to. They're going to have to start paying the loan back. What a novelty. How interesting. You have to pay the loan back? You can't just pay the interest? Wow. All right going to cover this more. I just wanted to reiterate. When you have the exact same things that have taken place before, whether it's in that country or not, you should be learning from your mistakes. But instead, they made the exact same mistakes. And we all know where it's headed. Interest only period expiry you can see here what has happened. Over the next three years, we are going to have a, as far as I'm concerned, major slew of bankruptcies in Australia. There's no way that people are going to be able to pay this back. There's absolutely no way. They're going to have to give up the home. You can see that generally that five-year point they will be now unable to roll it over. So they are going to have to figure out how to get more money, even though the economies around the world are slowing down. I don't know how they're going to do this, but it's going to be a big, big problem. All right. Moving on. Loan payments at interest-only period expiry, share of loan balance, 30-year mortgage, 5-year interest-only term. You can see interest-only payments on the left-hand side 
on the right hand side, you can see what happens when you add that principal on there. Imagine people who can't afford homes were buying million dollar homes and all of that is interest only. They can barely make the payments, but hey, things are going to work out eventually. But then you add some principal on top of that. No, there's just no way. Lending to Australian housing investors plummeted in March, a factor that could lead to further property price declines in the months ahead. According to the Australian Bureau of Statistics, the value of investor housing finance tumbled 9% in seasonally adjusted terms to $10.88 billion, the smallest monthly total since January 2016. In percentage terms, it was the largest monthly decline since September 2015. So it is a significant drop that is being experienced right now in Australia. Over the, the year, investors' lending slumped 16%, the largest decline since May 2016. And saying basically year-on-year -year growth to investors is running at 26% and so on, okay? They're trying to make it look good, and I think that we will be encountering some very, very dangerous um, problems with debt in Australia between today into 2021 and beyond. It's just going to continue to compound and compound and compound, and that assumes that everything stays the way it is, that we don't have a recession, that we don't have problems around the world that will bring this down over the next three years. Otherwise, it's going to be a lot sooner than that. I wanted to bring up two factors here. Number one, the interest rate set by the central bank. Just wanted to cover the fact that, first of all, you can see just as the other central banks around the world, throughout the 2000s, the central bank started to increase interest rates and then they dropped them significantly after the financial crisis. Then they tried to pick them up again, but it was ultimately too soon. And they have been historically extremely low. They are higher. <clears throat> they are higher than what they are experiencing in other countries, there's no doubt. But I believe it's 1.5% at this time. It's still historically extremely low. Just look at where it has gone over the years. And there's no way, absolutely no way, that it will ever get into this territory again. It's going to have to perhaps come up if things start to heat up. But it won't be long before they bring them down yet again. Take a look at the mortgage rates. You can see here a five-year fixed term. This is a standard mortgages here i don't know what this mortgage plus program is this is Citibank. i just grabbed this as an example i'm sure you could find cheaper rates elsewhere i'm sure that with these posted rates if you were to negotiate a little you can push it down but ultimately these rates here 4.5 around that range four percent let's say even we are looking at amounts that quite frankly people are not going to be able to pay back it's too high. When you're carrying a debt load of, let's say, a million dollars, who in their right mind is able to pay this off? One of the most important things about the Australian economy is Australia's relationship with China. Okay? This is something that I always talk about when people ask, you know, what, what's the situation in Australia? Please, David, tell me what's going to happen. I always say, look for what's going on in China. It is so critical to understand the relationship between these two countries. So always, always keep an eye on it, okay? I need to cover all of this, so let me move through it as quick as possible. Over the past 10 years, we have seen a growing interdependency between our economies and the types of spending initiatives that we have seen are, a part, are in part made possible because of the increased demand and improving prices for Australian commodities from China. However, the Chinese economy is maturing, and as demand grows for more sophisticated products and services, Australia will have to work hard to maintain its current position. 
okay? There are challenges. There is no doubt about that. But I do see the two countries engaging in trade and, you know, being basically friendly to each other despite the relationship that we see from China and the other Western nations. It seems like Australia still wants to be there to do business. Geographically, it makes sense, obviously. And simply the fact that they want to be open to China. This underscores the importance of government investment, which encourages innovation, creates better products and services, and delivers world-class infrastructure, which derives drives efficiencies and makes simpler uh, for Australian companies to compete on the world stage. Look for what happens with these two countries, and you will know what's going to happen to Australia. It's so critical. The flattening of Australia's income tax. There, this article basically was talking about income tax, and you can see it for yourself if you're interested. I just wanted to talk about the fact that higher taxes in general do not solve problems, and we can see that all the time. I am 100% completely convinced that the more taxation there is, ultimately the lower reward there will be. People need to be able to spend their money, even if it's on iPods and you know vacations and cars and, and silly things. This is more beneficial than taking it in taxes because, simply because, by the time it makes its way through the system, that dollar you put in may only be 50 cents or 30 cents or, or less, probably much less. So it makes its way through the administration and it's expensive. But if you were to just take that money that you earned, it came into your bank account, let's say there was no taxes, you retained all of your money. Well, you would take it and you would go to the restaurant and you would buy food there. You go to the movies and go see a show. You would you know, buy a car, you would go, you know, go on vacation, maybe you do all these things, spending more money, because ultimately, people really aren't going to save. Perhaps they would save a little bit more. And we see that savings rate are historically near the all time low. But regardless, I believe that we should be reducing these at all costs in order to put more money in people's pockets. That's just my two cents. That's it. I'm going to leave you right there. All my friends in Australia want to say hello to each and every one of you. I know that there are many subscribers out there from Australia always asking, please do some videos on Australia. Well, here you go. And there will be more to come. I'm trying to bring out different videos from different countries around the world. I have so many requests, but I don't want to do a video just to do a video. I want some good, solid information. I want to have that research to back up and all of that. So I do appreciate when you give me a thumbs up. So if you could, please give me a thumbs up on this video and all my videos. It really helps to push these videos higher up in the YouTube search rankings. So I really do appreciate that very much. And last but not least, if you found this video informative, I know that you will find my books, The Money GPS, and my newer release, Global Economic Collapse, even more informative. You can flip through these books at Amazon. If you go to the link in the description, you'll be taken over to Amazon. They have a look inside feature. It's going to allow you to flip through the pages of these books to see if you like them. Take care.